Hello friends, family, and other creatures of the sea. Welcome back to another game from the World Team League. Today we have Scarlet vs. Spirit. And this was the game 2 in particular that has been recommended to me. And uh, one of my favorite things of the World Team League is that we get the player cameras. And I especially love the player cameras when they have the, the angle that Spirit has over here. You, know, you can check what he has on his wall. Are there any posters? Did he make his bet this morning? And of course Spirit made his bet. He's a good boy like that. His spirit has the patience to sit behind tanks building ghost vikings and thors for uh, 10 hours a day. Like this guy, he definitely has the discipline as well to make his bed in the morning so he can sleep tightly at night. There's some rooms when you look at them. You know, there's really two types of pro gamer rooms, I think. You either have the, the clean, spirit-like look, white walls, nothing on there, bed is made, you know. Everything in perfect tip-top shape. And then you have players like Solar, who... I think Solar lives in like a, a studio apartment with his wife. Um, and if you see behind him on his camera, it's filled with freaking plushies. Like Pokemon, Super Mario, Kirby, all these types of... Just everywhere where you look, it's just plushies. It, it would personally drive me crazy. I'm, uh, I prefer the spirit vibe, you know, clean, sleek. Nothing on the walls. Uh, just a bed. I feel like it's the, the perfect vibe for a room. But well. Let's have a look at this game over here. Spirit opening up with a command center first. What's this? Yes. Command center first. Into a uh, delayed reaper. Gets the scout in as well with the SCV. Sees what's kicking off. Meanwhile Scarlet with a standard triple hatch. As four links do pop out. So... Uh, Spirit here needs to be careful with this SCV. Needs to get it back home. And then I wonder what he's going to do with the first Reaper as well. That's a good question. Because you know there's four links out on the map. You're not going to be in time to force them to stay at home with this Reaper. So you could either look for him with your Reaper. Or you could just keep your Reaper at home and kind of take it from there. Scarlet is trying to go for a run by. Or at least preparing for this run by. Factory about halfway done. As the next two SCVs are in production as well. Scarlet's just filming herself with the with the phone. So you don't get a good angle there of the room. It's also too dark. There's some players, Lambo and Scarlet in particular, they always like playing in the dark. You know, no no lights on. When we were at the boot camp, I had to fight for the lights to be on. Actually, I didn't have to fight, but you know, if it were them, the lights would always be off. So I always found found a nice compromise with a little bit of light, and they were okay with that. So here comes Scarlet with four links. SCV micro is good. Ooh, loses one there to uh, to the four links. First SCV was microed well. Second SCV wasn't microed at all. This one's gonna get pulled away and will survive. Alien is now on the way. So Roadrunner gets thrown down as well as two more gases. This feels to me like Scarlet is gonna go for a, a Ravager push here. A Ravager Ling all in. Is something we sometimes see. And is something we sometimes see win as well. However, Spirit opens up with a Banshee, I think. And that is most likely bad news here for our Polish Terran player. Or for our uh, Canadian Surf, sorry. Banshees are kind of the natural counter to all Roach builds. Because uh, contrary to popular belief, Roaches cannot actually shoot up. Three more Overlords here on the ways. The first four Roaches now uh, soon will arrive on the pitch. Six, seven more get constructed. It's going to be an 11 Roach push. I believe that behind this, we're going to see a serious Link Flood as well. This is not... Ooh, that was a neat move, by the way. You see that? He attacked his own Reaper with his Hellions to splash damage the Creep Tumor, which was hidden already underground. He got the kill there. Very neat. Nice play there, Spirit. Four Hellions at home. It's nice for him that these aliens roam. Did he see those roaches? I'm not sure if he did. Scarlet now is gonna reveal them anyway. He's gonna get a kill on the first Reaper, but the Hellion stays alive. Three more Overlords on the way. So we're gonna see 20 more links in production right now. We already have a couple of Ravagers. The first bunkers do go down. eBay wall is not going to be enough for a very long time, but it's going to survive at least for a little bit. As the Banshee finds the Ravagers, we'll start dealing with it. And as long as the Ravagers go down, this is going to be quite good for Spirit. Spirit also decides to give up his low ground. Pulls his Hellions to the high ground. 
And this honestly feels like a pretty decent start for Spirit. Has killed both of the Ravagers. As mentioned, this was a fairly dedicated attack coming out of Scarlet with loads of links coming in behind it. And uh, more than just three or four depots will need to go down here. I mean, clearing the refineries is nice, but that's also not, not such a huge deal. Especially given that these Banshees continue killing Roaches as well. We now have a Cyclone on the high ground. Both refineries will end up falling. Spirit managed to macro behind this. Scarlet in a pretty piss poor position at this moment. It's gonna basically lose every single Roach. Could actually... I don't want to say die, but... Could at least be in a little bit of trouble here against a potential follow-up. Just a straight-up attack. There's really not that many defensive units right now. There's just going to be a couple of links. I mean, you can build some roaches. There's going to be queens, of course. There's always queens. Queens are always there. Um, but really, it's just pure ling at this point. No bailing nest. Banshees are going to make their way across the map. That's going to be the first poke here out of spirit. The first test to see, hey, how is my position in this game? How scarlet position in this game? Uh, we do have an overshare on the way already. We have Glyal Reconstitution coming in as well, of course. The Roach Beat and Double Evo Chambers finishing up. That means we're going to see the 1-1 upgrades. And my question is, is it going to be range or melee? And it's going to be range. And I kind of like that. Because coming back, playing Ling Bane against the Terran is extremely difficult. There are very little players that are capable of actually doing that. Most players much prefer going for kind of Roach Infester or Roach Hydra Infester styles when uh, opting for that type of comeback. Scarlet does have a decent drone count, but doesn't have a fort base yet. So having 75 workers is great, especially if your opponent only has 60, but not having a fort base means you're just going to oversaturate a bunch of your bases. Spirit right now going up to his five racks, his thrusty five racks. He adds a bunker and a turret, and he's probably afraid of some type of one-on roach timing. The Banshees now will hit the fort base. I wonder if they can clear this. I don't think they can. I think probably together with the Hellions, they could have at least tried something here. Uh, but the Hellions aren't around. Probably uh, just hanging around their third base, keeping it safe. I'm not sure how necessary it is. Spirit definitely would have gotten the fort base. I mean, he gets it now, so with Hellions, he would have gotten it even faster. Four drones now going down. Oh my god, Scarlet in a world of trouble. On the brink of elimination here in this game. Because uh, losing 17 workers like this after getting your fort base cancelled is really not a great look. Yes, Scarlet's still up in supply, but supply is fairly irrelevant if it consists of pure road and your opponent is already pumping tanks like their life depends on it. No fort base, no high drone count, no better upgrades. This is not looking good here for the Canadian Zerg, who is uh, down to 66 workers. Investors now starting. So it is going to be the Roach Investor setup. This is a very common way of playing when behind, because Investors, they sometimes allow for a comeback. All, it, all you need is a, a good fungal or two or three or five. And all of a sudden, you know, there's some potential in there. There really is at times. Uh, we're going to have these roaches moving towards the far left side as well. As this uh, base... It's going to get cancelled again. And that is just painful at this point. See, it's not a cancel. It was a too long kill here. Uh, here on the bottom side. If this also goes down, this is, this is practically becoming unplayable. But it might just barely survive here. Uh, Spirit at the same time dropping in the main base though. Spirit has his eyes on a bigger target. This hatchery is going to survive. The main base doesn't take too much damage, but at least the marines get to pick up. Maybe can deny this fifth base one more time. As I think Spirit is moving out. Yeah, double drop towards the left. Hey, this base is really low. 60 marines run in. It's going to be a big deal. Spirit, however, is forgetting his 2-2 upgrades, and that is also quite a big deal. Because he could have been in a pretty significant lead here with those upgrades, but instead what we're seeing is a complete halt on them. We have the Ghost Academy on the way, we have continued medevac and tank production, so the gas is there, we have a sensor tower coming down, a planetary fortress, so yeah, the, the, the gas is there, it's just not being spent in the right place, because upgrades definitely should be getting some priority, and I think this is, this is an oversight on Spirit's part. This is not on purpose, absolutely not. Ooh. Big fat bungles there. Is these Biles also going to connect? And Spirit, with the first serious loss in a while, now is going to be moving out. Perhaps attempting a 2-2 push, not realizing he's not going to have the 2-2 upgrades because he never started them. 
tanks are gonna go across the map. Ravager count is decent. Investors being taken out by this Banshee. Pushed back. One will fall. This hatchery in a lot of trouble. Will still survive for now. Spirit pretty much uh, attacking into a Rochal in here. And with his tank count might still be capable of doing it. No, Scarlet's gonna push it back. Spirit will get a kill there on the hatchery and takes out a bunch of drones on the top side. Might actually try going for the hatch. No, just continues taking out drones. Only two marines remain after all. Ten drones end up falling. Hatch went down. Now finally 2-2 starts for Spirit. He's gonna be pretty upset about himself there. Oh. 2-2 could have been done, but instead it, it just barely starts. Could have been starting 3-3 and then we're really starting to move into a pretty decent uh, upgrade lead. Given the fact that Scarlet hasn't started the Carapace upgrade yet. Instead we see a rush here into the Brute Lord. This is something we almost never see. Especially not this early in the game. Mainly due to the fact that Brute Lords slow the game down massively. And make it very easy for Terran to, to expand all around the map. You don't have the ability to clear bases. Usually you just have a single push and that's going to be it. A couple of Biles here gonna connect with that tank. This is not a fight that Scarlet wants to take though. That does not clear those final two tanks. We'll remain with, uh, with Orange HP. Spirit believes that he has a better army than I think he does. Spirit is right. This is going to push Scarlet away. And we'll take this base out as well. I thought he needed to fight inside a tank range. But Spirit says, no, I don't need to. Even with 1-1 one, one units, I'm going to be fine here. This is just a couple of Rogers and Ravagers. Takes out this base, I think, for the second time. Lots of bases have gone down already. Scarlet right now, 160 supply. And the worst thing is that a bunch of that supply is stuck on Corruptor that are now morphing into Brute Lord. So the real fighting supply is practically non-existent. Uh, Scarlet on the verge of death here. No real chance of, uh, of holding this. The position is... Uh, ooh, oh, never mind. Oof! Kills five medifacts at the same time. Well, that was necessary. Couple big stims coming in as well. Base is gonna fall. No, base is not gonna fall. That survives with like 2 HP. Now the Brute Lord show up. We're gonna have a drop. Marauder doesn't get the target fire on the base. The, the, the hatch survives and Scarlet's gonna barely manage to push this back. Still in a, in a bad position. Still in a bad position. But perhaps with a little bit of hope right now. It is five base against, well, four bases at the moment in favor of spirit but there is a push coming in and do we have enough anti or do we have enough tools to deal with these brute lords i think the answer is yes because there's only four brute lords if this was 12 brute lords maybe the answer would be no but with four brute lords i think you don't actually need that march here come the marines with a flank two brute lords get targeted down just by those single viking in the sky is going to clear this as well as scarlet finally will get pushed back i think and now I really see nothing left here for uh, our Zerg player. Couple of Ravagers, couple of Roaches. Two Vipers. Gonna have a double drop uh, being set up to the far right side. I mean, the supplies are close. The worker count is close. But the army quality is not very close at all. I'm surprised once again that Spirit does not continue his upgrade. 3-3 hasn't started yet. It has saved Scarlet before. Imagine all of these fights with 3-3 upgrades or 2-2 upgrades when it was just 1-1. Would have made a significant difference here in these battles. Scarlet now transitioning out of Brute Lords and into Banelink. So really into a more primitive tech, if anything. Are we going to get a Fungal? No, not quite going to catch it. This sixth base does end up getting taken out. That's a fairly big deal. Sir so can't really survive on five bases forever. Eventually they'll need a sixth. As long as you're kind of controlling that right side, life's going to be good. Creep spread, however, is looking quite decent on the right side. Especially given the fact how far behind Scarlet was and how little queen she had left over for creep tumors. Scarlet is one of these players. It reminds me a bit of like Bly and Nurcho, who always loved... Eh, no, not Nurcho. I think Bly is fair. With very little creep tumors. You can see on the minimap, there's like a single creep tumor line. So it's easy to clear, but it's also quite impressive because you're not losing a lot of energy and it doesn't spread as fast. It's not as easy to spread in multiple directions, you know? You just have those, those single lanes being pushed out, which I think is just super cool. Corruptors now. Gonna start a wild goose chase. 
rather than chasing goose or geese. It's going to be medevacs. A wild goose chase is when you chase the goose, right? It is not that geese are known for going on wild chases. I don't think so, at least. I played this game where you play a goose. I think it's called Annoying Goose or something like that. Or maybe it's called like a goose game. But you are a goose and then you have to take stuff from a farmer or you like certain missions. But I think the, the thing is, is you don't know what needs to be done. So there's no... Or maybe there is a task list? I can't remember. I feel like there was no task list. So you're just running around and then at some point you complete the mission and you get to go to the next, next level. Meanwhile here in StarCraft 2, you have a big fungal hitting a lot of these girls. Probably did some pretty decent fights. The unit lost that is fairly even. You can see it in the bottom right here. 22,000 resources lost against 22,000. That is impressive given that Scarlet has been fighting with an extremely bad army this entire time. Spirit is not doing this too well. Now finally starting his plus three attack. Viking still in the sky. We have the fusion core about 80% uh, done as well. As 3-3 now starts and we're gonna see this uh, six base flying over. So six, six bases being taken for both players at a similar time. More command centers here on the way as well. I'd love to just see Spirit go up to like 12, no, 10, 10, 11 command centers, orbital commands. Then just lower his worker count a bit, because his worker count is so freaking high. He's not actually mining that much. I guess a couple of them are transferring at the moment. Bailing count, pretty decent. This bottom left side base could actually be in some trouble. I don't think that planetary is done yet there. That's why these links are just being split off. Yeah, planetary not done. And now the planetary is done over here. We'll need to lift up a couple of SCVs. 16 will go down. This position gets taken out. Single 8 marine drop is going to move into spore range. And there are links nearby. They're not being used right now. And that matter of fact uh, was just queued up into that spore and ends up dying. Not the greatest play out of spirit. As advanced ballistics now on the way, more tanks coming in too. You have the top right side base being taken here for Scarlet, who actually is building a pretty decent bank. Still working with uh, a fairly mediocre army though. Ravager Ling Bane. Is it going to be good enough against these high tank counts, against these high ghost counts? Bile's not quite connecting. A couple of snipes going down. There's a corruptor patrolling the far right side of the map, making sure nothing is going to, to hit it. One of the problems that Scarlet needs to face in the next few minutes is the fact that this left side base, this 9 o'clock that Scarlet took a while ago, hasn't mined that much and also is fairly vulnerable because there's a... You can attack it from a ramp, but that's usually good for Terran. For the moment, the Liberator and tank count increases. That could be a problem. Oh my god, Bile is fungal there, hitting all of these uh, Vikings. Road run by now towards the right side. Uh, there's no tank in position. The bunker's gonna get taken out. We have a decent, uh, decent amount of the army moving over. Actually, the entire force now moving towards the right. A couple of marauders and marines are gonna try to split off. Maybe clear that left side base. We need an attack towards the top right as well. We're, we're spirit over here. We need to do something about that base. Hopefully, hopefully he can. Scarlet moves forward. Once again takes the high ground. This is not what Spirit wants to give up. Spirit wants to keep this high ground. It's absolutely vital for his uh, gold-based survival chances. And right now, it's not looking all that hot. Uh, also not looking that hot for these roaches, though, as they are going to get blasted. Scarlet actually up in the resources lot right now. This is a, a rare sight to behold in a TVZ. Usually only seen when Serral plays. Definitely not common. Eight Ultras on the way. Eight. I could understand the Ultras if Spirit had taken the far right side base already, but right now it feels like in these kind of clunky, clumped up areas going to be rough. Unless they come into a Nidus. Oh, that would be something. Oh, that would be something. Nidus is going to get spotted. At the same time, we have a Ling run by over here in the third base, but tanks in position now to deal with it. Spirit doesn't even really need to pay attention. 
There's the Ultra's pop. I think this can still solve some of that. I'm not sure, however, if Spirit was paying attention. Here comes the push forward. The Arc Corruptor. There's a Viper as well. So these um, Liberator, or well, the Liberator is going to get taken out. However, there's enough Ghosts and Marines to push this back for now. Spirit has a lot of cash in the bank. Could probably spend that into units that are a little bit better than Marines. I'm not so sure if we really want a, a vast Marine force at this point. Actually, I'm pretty sure we don't. Marines not great against Balings. Marines not great against Ultras. Marines not great against Infestors. And yeah, what are we building? Marines. Going to make life much, much harder than it should be. Spirit also spreading himself insanely thin right now, taking that far right. I don't mind this attack. I think this is a good attack. Oh, well, if he had microed it, it would have been much better. Um, however, taking that base actually exposes his right flank quite a bit. I mean, he's taken out this 9 o'clock. He's mining from the gold. I don't think Spirit is in a hurry to take all the bases. He can just mine out the gold, deny this base for a little longer, and then maybe even take that base, that 9 o'clock that belongs to Scarlet. I don't think Scarlet can ever take the base that we're looking at right now. That's just simply not possible. Drops are too strong against that. Liberators are too good against it. And now spreading yourself this thin, it means that Scarlet can take these wide open fights and now the Ultras uh, are really helping out. Before I felt like the Ultras couldn't do much, but here out in the open, they're powerful, they're strong. Such a rough position to hold. This is the last base that Terran wants to take usually. Absolutely the last base. Scarlet is going to try to grab it. And that seems like a very wishful thinking in my mind. I don't think there's any way in which a Zerg takes this base. Unless the Terran allows it to happen, of course. In that case, I mean... It is possible, but I... I just don't see it. Ooh. And here we go, look at that! Spirit's going to be too late uh, to his own party, really, because... This is where the party is supposed to be, up on this high ground. This is where he's supposed to be moving in forward. But due to his uh, want to take that right side base, he now is out of position. Now his gold is even in a little bit of trouble. Scarlet's going to move in forward. Corruptor Viper moving in. Blinding Cloud is good. Corruptor's moving in the air. We'll take out a couple, if not all, of these medifacts. And Spirit is running out of gas at this point. Ultra's moving in forward. Scarlet pulls back. At the same time, gold gets blasted. So uh, gets two bases for the price of one. Well, that far right side and the far left have now been taken out. And this is what happens when you spread yourself too thin, too early. You end up paying the price. And Spirit definitely ends up paying the price here. He loses the high ground control. He doesn't have the right side base anymore. And he doesn't have the left side base anymore. So he, he wanted to get it all. And as a result, he, he lost everything. He got greedy there. And now his base situation is not looking too hot. Scarlet once again... With a really nice rotation towards the right side. Ultras coming in. That is too choky, I think, to really go in. We have a Nidus network uh, trying to pop off on the right near that uh, 3 o'clock base. Drones can escape with that. And of course, also makes it easier for uh, defensive units to come in. Oh my god, Scarlet once again finding damage here. I didn't think this was going to be possible. This bottom base felt so secure. Spirit just moving his entire army whenever there's a new threat. Like a dog chasing his nose. But the scent of the Ultras is... Uh, it's too strong, I think. Spirit doesn't know what to do against it. This drop is good, obviously. These right side bases for Scarlet are also really hard to hold. They're far away. Like, the, the knife cuts both ways here. So... That's why I said I, I think Spirit was fine just being compact. Keeping that gold base and then pushing up into the high ground towards the 9 o'clock. I think that was supposed to be the game plan. But now that game plan has been well taken out. This is such a hard base. Look at the setup here. This is the only place on the map where a Zerg can fight. Because you can actually surround, come from multiple sides. It has a big ramp leading up. And right now Scarlet doesn't even need to fight into it. Can have a big lane run by here. There's no planetary. That means that they can lift up, which is nice. They do need to lift up. Yeah, there we go. Uh, but at the same time, it also means that just a couple of links can be very annoying. Nidus Network is not going to finish up. A couple of Ultras will fall. Scarlet up in resources lost still. 48,600 to 50,000 resources lost. As a couple of Marauders now show up. 
Not gonna get the kill here. Parasitic Bomb plus the Chasing Corruptor might just be enough. That's going to be the end of this still. No vehicle weapon upgrades at all, by the way, here. Tanks still at 0-0. Zero, zero. Ship weapons, non-existent. Meanwhile, we see Scarlet with plus 3, plus 1 on air units. Full upgrades on ground. That's another point of criticism here for Spirit, I think. Who's now just gonna sit back. Needs to mine something. Really just anything. And still has a chance. I mean, the resources lost has been extremely close as long as he mines out his portion of the map and then gets to deny one of his opponent's bases spirit is still going to be in a fine spot nidus network now coming up in the main base spirit not paying attention is there anything in the nidus worm that's the question can this nidus worm achieve anything drones filled with drones so no it can't, cannot achieve anything uh, so this base is gonna fall and this is exactly what spirit needs Like, really, the winner of the next fight most likely is the winner of the game, because neither player right now has a bank. Spirit's army is uh, a little bit bigger, 126 supply to 115. Scarlet is now mining from three gold patches, as well as two more gases. Especially that gas is going to be important if you want to increase the army value. Spirit is now set up on this far right side base. He's pretty much given up his entire left side. And if Spirit can deny the top right side base... Mine out this base completely. Could actually be fine. Could actually be fine. Because he mined quite a bit from the gold. I don't think Scarlet mined a whole lot from this top right side base. Not that much gas at least. Here come the Ultras. We want to go in. This often seems like a mistake, because you're like, well, this base doesn't actually hold any resources anymore, so why would you go in there? Well, it is an angle that Spirit still needs to defend, and not having that backup there of the planetary anymore feels really bad. It really does. You feel exposed here as a Terran, as three Marauders and two Marines are going to take out an Extractor, cancel a Hatchery, and I think Spirit eventually wants to start moving in. Still hasn't started any ship weapon upgrades. Look at the Liberator count, look at the tank count. How can our armory not has been, have been spinning this entire time? I don't understand that. That's crazy to me, it really is. Vikings being produced, but... Vikings with 0-0 zero, zero upgrades against plus 2 armor air units? That's not gonna be a great fight, really. And here comes the run by. This is why taking out that planetary was so big. Because both players are maxed, which means there's no natural reinforcement line anymore. So whenever a run-by happens, you can't just clean it up with reinforcements. You have to clean it up by sending an army back. And that provides possibilities, opportunities for Scarlet to perhaps do something here. Scarlet with an extremely low, extremely low gas count right now. 3k minerals in the bank, but only 500 gas. He's trying to mine as much of the gas as possible, but the question is, of course, is it going to be enough? It's both armies now increasing massively in size. Nidus Network going up in the main base. Spirit is moving over. I'm coming over. Running every red light. Nidus Network is empty. These Nidus Networks have really been the uh, opposite of Pandora's box, as so nothing comes out every single time. Spirit's pretty happy with that. Scarlet not gonna be mining this bottom side base. I'm like, well, I can mine the top right. Maybe I can... I think, what was that? The 6 or the 7 o'clock? Fair play. I wish this observer would click the gases here. The, uh, so I could see how much gas is still left in there. I... If I remember correctly, I don't think I saw Scarlet mine at a whole bunch. It's really important. This base is going to survive. Helmets are out on the map. Of course, without any real upgrades, though. So, yeah, practically pointless. Here come the Brute Lords moving in. C Wait, he never had Cloak? Just now Spirit starts Cloak. I feel like this has been the game of the Forgotten Upgrades. 
This could be an Indiana Jones movie. Indiana Jones and the Forgotten Cloak. The Cloak of Spirit. They still make Indiana Jones movies? I feel like they do. Indiana Jones and James Bond. You know, they're the two that never will go away. I'll be 85 and I'll still be watching, I'll be watching Indiana Jones 98 or something. James Bond 37. At some point, we'll run out of the James Bond books, right? Indiana Jones probably also wrote books, but I never heard of those. Although I do believe in the ability of the film studios to write another James Bond movie, so like, that would be too difficult. They, they follow a set formula, I think. Yes, uh, we might actually be moving into seemingly the final fight here. Started losing a lot of ultras for free, that sucks. Now pushing forward on the right. Spirit really moves his entire army from side to side. But um, it's, not looking, it's not looking very sexy. It, it, it really ain't. Scarlet didn't get the damage that she wanted done. You have so many air units and no air upgrades. That makes no sense to me. This move four is also kind of crazy. If there's like a an investor hidden somewhere, or you have a, a viper with a parasitic bomb that could do a huge bunch of damage. This army is massive, this army is big. Can Scarlet fight it? I don't know. Here come the corruptors moving forward. Not really taking a lot of damage against these Vikings. Bailings rolling in as well. The brutes are pushing out a lot of damage and the only thing left on the ground right now is going to be these ghosts. Is that going to be enough to deal with the Brute Lord? I'm not so sure. Fungal's going to connect. At least with a Liberator. Ghost on the ground. Not going to be enough. As Scarlet takes a significant supply lead and his Spirit is out of cash. That's going to mean the end of the game here, to be quite honest. I am uh, very, very surprised by that. I had not expected Spirit to, to go down. I really think having the late upgrades initially, the late 2-2, the late 3-3, and then never getting any other upgrades cost him massively. It cost him dearly. That CC is still going to be flying back. Spirit still believes in life after love. Love after life. Love after love? One of the three. Do you still believe in life after love? Love after love? I can see me Life after love? It's either love after love or life after love. Either way, this game is absolutely over. GG gets called. And that, my dear friends, is going to be it for us today. Whoa! I'm truly here. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy this, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully we'll see all of you next time for a new video. Bye-bye.